This is a wake up call in regard to dental student debt. This video is for dental students right now. It's also for pre-dental students, so students in college that are looking to go into dentistry, and also for the parents out there that are thinking about having their kids become dentists. In the past several years, dentistry has gotten great recognition. In US news and world, the rankings often come up with dentistry as the number one profession, both from the money it makes and the great work-life balance. But here is the truth. Let's talk about the history first. So with dentistry, in a couple of generations ago, the main, I would say, interest for a lot of these people that go into the profession was one's ability to work with their hands. There's an art to it. Now, if you go to a generation before and a generation after that generation, the wanting to work with their hands had to be added to one more thing. So those dentists also needed to be an interest in medicine and in science. The reason being is in that generation, there was a great explosion in science and there's also a change in the social structure in the world. There's a lot of aging population from the baby boomers that needed a different set of dental health care. And I would say I was at the end of that generation. Now the next generation of dentists has to be another third piece, and that is business savvy. So one, not only have to have an interest in working with their hands, understand medicine and science, but also they have to be great business persons. From these occupation websites and ranking, we know that dentists do well, and so, a lot of dental students, including post-dental students like me, didn't think, think much of dental student debt. We just think that once we graduate, maybe go into residency and go off to practice in the real world, that things will just work its way out. But the truth is, the way things are right now is completely different and it's something that needs to be faced right away and something that has to be known for people that want to go into this field. Here's the problem. Dental school costs are going increasingly high. It's not to say that dental school is the only one, but it's the one that's kind of a little bit hidden until the last couple of years and now where we're really talking about and I just want to add to that. So here's a list of dental school tuition costs. Keep in mind, these are just tuition costs, let alone uh, additional fees that schools have like clinic fees and also fees of like the living costs. You have to pay rent, uh, you have to eat. And so these expenses just completely adds on to exceedingly high. If you look at studentdoctor.net, they have a lot of great resources where people compile a list of the costs of dental schools. And these are just outrageous. We're looking at north of a half a million, some above. And again, those are just tuition costs for the fourth year, not to mention the cost in going to a specialty or the cost of living and so on and so forth. So why is this debt such a big deal? So let's take a look at the numbers. So let's say you graduate from dental school and you associate and you make a pretty good a number at let's say 120,000 a year. So the downside with being a dentist is that you get a high pay, but you're also in a high tax bracket. And thus a lot of that 120, about 25 to 30% of it goes to taxes. And not only that, that's where the debt comes in. So let's say you subtract the taxes, so you're now at around $80,000 a year or $7,000 a month. And then you have to subtract the debt you have to pay back per month. So let's say you're in a 10-year plan at like 
$500,000, you're looking to pay her around $5,000 a month. So that $7,000 that you get in net gain from your practice is now only about $2,000 a month. That's not living as a dentist. You're definitely living at near poverty level, and that's real. And the tough thing is you have to do this maybe for several years to pay back the debt. Uh, you don't wanna continue to leave it um, and default on it, one. Uh, and then if you don't wanna pay even more interest uh, in a like 30 year plan, you, you're gonna have to pay those high numbers per month to be able to do it. So it's, it's tough to live at $2,000 a month uh, not to mention people that want to have a family, a car or a home, or even to buy a practice. Uh, it's, it's definitely a lot of financial stresses that's real. Right now, the profession is in a squeeze. We have a situation where a lot of our patients are insurance-based. It's kind of like how our country works in medical care and soon dental care. And these insurance companies are reimbursing at a lower rate. And to make things worse, we're, we're being squeezed from both ends because our costs are increasingly high from the manufacturer's end. So our take home is increasingly smaller. So what happens to compensate that? So one, you have to live not in your typical dentist life. Uh, you're, you're definitely leaving below your means and doing your best. <laughs> Uh, and second, you have to work really hard, especially if you're in a big city. Oftentimes, uh, in what I've read and the people that I talk to, and I see it right now because I live in a pretty big city in Boston, in a very competitive city, uh, I would say. Uh, and so it, it's quite easy to find a new graduate have to hustle and work six or seven days a week. And because it's so competitive, it's not like you can just graduate and associate at one place. You kind of have to work at two or three or four places to get your full schedule to maximize your time. Now you'll hear some people outcry is like, wow, those numbers are too high, or they use themselves as an example of being able to pay out debt really quickly and they own practices after three or five years. Those are true. There are people that are able to pay their debt in less than five years and own multiple practices at that point. But let this be sure, those are exceptional business people, I'm sure hopefully great clinicians and scientists and great with their hands as well. But those are the exceptions to the rules. Uh, the days where one would just graduate and just let things play out are over. Uh, we have to plan day one as a dental student in their first year for this high debt and it can only go higher. So here's the bottom line. Am I saying don't do dentistry anymore? Of course not. I still think it's a great uh, profession. I still think it's great for the people that are about to go in into it now. It's just something to keep in mind. Uh, there's Dentistry is not alone in this. There's other profession, uh, including medicine or being a lawyer that faces these same stresses. But it, it's something that I would say it's a little bit hidden across all the great media coverage that the profession has been getting recently about the career. So the business side is real. I don't want people to think that they would have to practice unethically. Definitely don't do that. Uh, you don't want to over treat. But what's real is you really have to look into the volume of patients to see to make up for the increase in costs and being squeezed from the reimbursement part as well. And for the people that want to live in what's really considered the life of a dentist, you have to own a practice. You can't really associate for life that will put a hard cap on how much you can make and, and so there's this trend of new graduates and even existing dentists that have been practicing for many years it's ownership that's the trend and it's made more difficult by these corporations gobbling up more and more spaces so bottom line dentistry is still a great great profession and you have a lot of videos i have previously that would note that. The main point that I want to emphasize 
in this video is that you have to consider the business aspect of it.